Okay, so in previous videos, I've talked about asking for help and different programs that you can use for financial relief. And today, uh, we're going to go down a different route and talk about Stoicism. Now, Stoicism is technically a philosophy. Uh, it's not really a religion. Uh, it was developed, I believe, during uh, the Romans, um, in the latter part of the, the Roman Empire. Uh, the first known Stoic, or the father of Stoicism, is believed to be Marcus Aurelius, uh, who was an emperor during the Roman time. Uh, I'm going to briefly talk about him, but I really want to go over the philosophy and how it pertains to your household budget and how you can use Stoicism uh, to get out of debt. So I wrote up something. I'm going to be reading it verbatim, but um, you know I'll talk about other things that aren't mentioned in the document. But it's so you can see what I'm saying and hear it at the same time. It's just so you'll get more out of it. So let me start the screen share and we'll get right to it. All right. So today we're going to be talking about Stoicism. We will also compare and contrast Stoicism with being a Buddhist monk. And the reason I'm doing that is because there's a lot of similarities uh, between Stoicism and Buddhism, and they developed at just about the same time in history. Maybe they're about 500 years apart in their region away, but they're very, very similar. Uh, as mentioned in a previous video, Stoicism can help you balance your household budget. To sum up, Stoicism is when you do not live for pleasure and instead value your time as your most important currency. The reason I want to contrast Stoicism with being a Buddhist monk is because I want to caution people against taking Stoicism too far as that is possible. Stoicisms will, Stoics will do intermittent fasting, they will sleep less than eight hours a day, and they will spend less time on things such as personal hygiene, style, and shopping. A Stoic will typically only work to get the income necessary to survive. If you are in debt, this is not a good idea because reducing your income will prevent you from getting out of debt. So I think traditionally speaking, a Stoic is really only going to focus on the bottom line, uh, only making what they need to survive, and that's it. They're not hoarding money. They're not saving up for retirement. Uh, but if you're in debt, you need to be making more money than... Uh, you're spending on your basic uh, survival because you need money left over to pay off debt. So if you if you become a minimalist too soon, uh, it'll uh, disempower you from getting out of debt. Anyways, being a monk is even more extreme than being a stoic. A monk only eats one meal per day in the morning. A monk only sleeps six hours per day at maximum. Uh, they also sleep on the floor. A monk relies purely on food donations. A monk is a vegetarian who cannot kill and is totally celibate. A monk is not allowed to make an income or handle money, even if donated. If you are in debt, you do not qualify to be a monk because you will be unable to pay off your debt since you won't be able to make or handle money. So for your normal everyday person, being a monk is a too extreme of uh, path and stoicism. It's just taking it too far because you can't make money, you can't handle money. So if you have any debts, if you have anything to pay off, a car, house, whatever, you're not gonna be able to do it as a monk. So either you'd have to give up those things and get repossessed or uh, you'd have to pay them off completely. But uh, a monk is not allowed to make money or handle money. So you're basically living in a hut in the woods which is, again, probably too much for most people. Uh, stoicism can be a helpful pathway for normal people to get out of debt. A stoic does not concern themselves with what people think, and they do not go out to engage in frivolous pleasures. 
So they're not seeing movies on a Friday night. They're not going out to restaurants. They're not going out to bars. Uh, they're just focusing more on their own survival. Uh, stoic exercises vary, but the point is to become more present to the moment and to become less concerned with society and what people think of you. Stoic exercises may include fasting, dressing like the opposite sex, quitting your job, becoming homeless voluntarily, living in one's vehicle, eating food with no spice or flavoring, solitude, sleeping on the floor, taking cold showers, vegetarianism, avoiding contact through electronic means, refraining from entertainment, celibacy, and no fat. Now, I think one major difference between Buddhism and Stoicism is that Stoicism isn't really about karma and ethical behavior. Uh, Stoicism is, is just about becoming more present to the moment and um, not being uh, enslaved to anything. Um, so that's why there's, in Stoicism, there's the focus on celibacy, no fat, refraining from entertainment, you know, reducing your screen time, etc. cetera. Uh, Stoicism is about being free, whereas Buddhism is, it, it's still about freedom, but with Buddhism, you're not allowed to engage in any pleasures at all. Whereas with Stoicism, it's just a, a major reduction. Uh, Stoicism is more about exercising your freedom, whereas as a, as a Buddhist monk, there's so many things you're not allowed to do. Um, it's, it's usually too extreme for most people. Uh, some exercises may be good for you and may even be healthy, while others will be too extreme for you to pull off. I mean, not everybody's even going to be able to take a cold shower. They're pretty hard to deal with, you know, for, for more than a minute. I mean, they're pretty rugged. Some may help your budget, but may, may not help your budget, but may help you develop the willpower to stay on your household budget. Everyone needs to decide for themselves what they're willing to do and how far they're willing to go with stoicism. So saving on your food budget should be, you know, your, your biggest uh, priority if you're planning on becoming more stoic because that's going to affect your budget. That's gonna affect your ability to get out of debt, also not going out, you know, and you don't have to be a total hermit in order to be a stoic, but you're just not going to value uh, going out and spending money to get pleasure like you would as a normal person. So the best stoic exercises for balancing your household budget are intermittent fasting, solitude, cold showers, and eating less expensive food. Now, for cold showers, it depends on your heating system, how you heat your hot water, but it is expensive. Uh, heat, hot water is a, an expensive thing. Sleeping on the floor may help you downgrade your living situation because it will make you accustomed to less comfort, but sleeping on the floor will not help your budget in the short term. The most important stoic exercise to balancing your budget is the cessation of partying. A lot of people want to go back to their normal lives due to the COVID-19 pandemic lockdowns. But for some, this is not a good idea. Not only could you deal with legal issues from things that happen while partying, you will deal with getting less income due to recovery slash hangover and more money wasted. In summary, I think it's important to become familiar with stoicism and work within your limitations. So that's my point is that, you know, you're not going to be able to do all this and that's fine. You might not be able to pull off taking cold showers. You might need that warmth and that's fine. Um, you might only be able to take intermittent fasting so far. Uh, your body has a set point. Uh, it's going to need a certain amount of calories and you're not going to be able to go too far under that. Um, as far as, you know, for the taste of food and, you know, the expense of it, I think most people can downgrade how much money they spend on food, but they can really only take it so far. And you can really only go down to ramen noodles. You can't go any lower than that. I don't think there's any food cheaper than ramen noodles. I mean, if a food is in season, 
you know, fruit or vegetables in season, it might be very cheap, but it won't be as cheap as ramen. But you can learn more about Stoicism by reading the book Meditations by Marcus Aurelius, as mentioned before. There are other important Stoics of history, but admittedly, the philosophy lacks popularity because of the human tendency to seek pleasure and avoid pain. Can you use Stoic exercises to become more financially healthy? You will have to decide for yourself. Obviously, you might be thinking, hey, I'm already stoic. I'm already cutting down on this and that and blah, blah, blah. That's probably due to necessity. But can you take it beyond where you're at now? That's the question. And I mean, again, I can't stress enough. Everybody needs to decide for themselves how far they're willing to go. I remember at one point in my life, I was eating almost exclusively ramen noodles because I was incredibly poor. And then a paycheck hit and I was still poor, but I was eating ramen noodles and peanut butter sandwiches. So one meal would be peanut butter sandwiches, another meal would be ramen. And then when I went to work, I would have a little bit of popcorn, but that was pretty much it. And then another paycheck hit and I was starting to eat normal again. But I think that the point is oftentimes when we get into financial difficulty, there is a degree of personal responsibility and we need to take that personal responsibility. But you can be a stoic and you can be signed up for Community Solar at the same time. So this is my Facebook page. Michael Cormier, CSA for Neighborhood Sun. And the post pinned at the top, you can learn more about signing up for Community Solar, where you can get a 10% discount on electricity for 20 years. So when you click this button at the top middle, that's to get more information. This button at the top right is to become a CSA, so you can get supplemental income. Now, if you are interested in signing up, but you need more information, you can look at this page and it'll give you plenty of information. But if you wanna to talk to me about signing up for Community Solar, you click this button and this is an opt-in page. So you put in your information, your name, your email, your phone number, and you click, I wanna know if I'm ex eligible for Community Solar. Uh, so this would put you in the system and it would say, hey, Mike, there's this person that wants to learn about Community Solar. This is their contact information. Why don't you go talk to them? And I can talk to you about the particulars of signing up for Community Solar. Um, it's not really a tough process. It takes about 10 minutes. And the only thing you're gonna need is your CMP account number. You're gonna need to write down a login for Common Energy and you're gonna need bank account information. But this is not going to cost you anything. This is a savings. This is a 10% savings on your electricity bill for 20 years. And there's no cancellation and there's no termination fees. So yeah, that's my video for today about stoicism. Uh, it's basically just a primer or an introduction. Um, in my next video, I'm going to be talking about taxes. And then I'm going to move on to other tips on budgeting. So I uh, hope everyone had a good weekend. Uh, it's Sunday as of me uh, recording this. And I hope everybody has a great week.